Lord. Our kind Father in heaven, thank you so much for the privilege to be here at ASI and to share and learn. And most of all, we thank you for the privilege we have to be vessels in your hands, to give you the glory, honor, and the praise. Be with us now as we go into our seminar, and may your Holy Spirit be here. May hearts be touched and lives be changed. These mercies we ask in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Amen. How many medical professionals do we have in the room? Good. I know Dr. Bavel is, is a, you know, an and they're all medical professionals. And uh, um, let me introduce to you first before I start, we, I'm, I'm in the dental office in, in the Detroit area, and uh, metro Detroit area, and uh, God has blessed us over the years to be able to do ministry through our office, and he's blessed us tremendously, and uh, we just want to, could someone pass the, some handouts out for me, to so make, make sure everyone gets one? And... Uh, You know, Detroit is a, is a very depressed area right now because of the bankruptcy and all the things that are going on. But God is still blessing. Amen. God is still blessing. And uh, I just want to introduce to you the, the team that works with us over the last few years. And we have our lay pastor here, Al Green, and his wife. Loretta Green, she's a, his co-partner here in, in ministry, and they, they work with, with my office. And uh, Dr. Julie here, she is our, our nutritionist, and she works with our office very closely. In fact, she has an office that's right in the same building as ours, and uh, she is a great help to, for her to work with. And then we have uh, Dr. Bavell. He came in from Florida and did some, some, some lecturing in our meetings. And he's, he has a, they have a ministry with, called United Hands with his wife, Anne, who is the director. And we all in medical ministry. And we work partnered with them and work with them. And God has certainly blessed us. So um, we wanted to discuss with you today 10 practical keys to health evangelism in the dental or medical office. And... Uh, I know we have a dentist here. Any other dentist in the room? Yes, one here. And uh, any physicians? Here, here. Okay. So um, f the first thing we did about two and a half years ago, um, God impressed me to, to start these meetings through my office. And I've always had meetings through my office over the years. And uh, God is truly blessed. And, uh, but this year we wanted to do something different. We wanted to make a team approach to, 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 to the medical evangelism. So we assessed the community and the needs of the community. Detroit was really going through rough times. People were out of jobs, no insurance, and uh, things were pretty depressed. And as a result, people were more receptive to the gospel, more receptive to health education, to health education. So. Um, there is, does anyone know the, the main reason why most medical professionals don't actually or are hesitant to do medical ministry through their office or whatever? Anyone has any idea? Right. That's, that, that, that's one of the main fears. If I talk about religion in my office, I could be labeled as a religious fanatic. I'll lose my patience. They will, they will, they will stop coming. And uh, it's something that you're not supposed to talk to you know, among your patients. And then also some people are fearful that um, if I take time off from my busy practice to do medical evangelism, I would lose revenue. And uh, I, I can't really afford it. I can't take the time off. And uh, 
But we have found the opposite to be true. Amen. The months that we, or the weeks, or where we go into intense evangelism, take a lot of time off. If you look at my books, at the end of those months, the revenue is, is greater, sometimes double. And uh, also, we find that the accounts receivable has dropped so low that so more people are paying their bills on those, on those months. So God makes up the difference. He supplies the resources for our, for our ministry. And uh, so don't be afraid to step out. And what was that text we, we talked about? Seek ye what? First? Seek ye first the, kingdom the kingdom of God and his righteousness and what? All things will be added unto you. And we, we repeat that all the time. And we know that if we put God first in our lives and our practices, in everything we do, that God will supply the need. He will supply the resources. And that's what we found out. So we advertised right in the dental office. We would leave flyers out. We leave magazines out. And we have, um, we use this Radiant Living magazine. It's a very complete magazine. And uh, we left that on the counters. We, we made up some, some flyers, health, healing, and hope. And we just left them on the counters. We, we didn't go to people and say, well, would you, could you come to our meetings? We just left things available for them on the counters everywhere. And people picked those things up. And we would show DVDs through the office, through the, in, in the patient rooms of our mission trips. We will show pictures of, of different activities we did, different videos we had. And uh, people would see those videos and ask about it. And we'll say, well, we have just about to start some meetings in our office that feature the same things. Would you like to come? And they were more than happy to come. And we had sign-up sheets in the office, and people would, would sign up. And let's talk about building a team. Building a team. We, had, we, we decided, you know, I used to do evangelism by myself before, and it was in the office, and it was a team to Speak to that for me, Elder Al. He's one of our team members here. What's, what's the importance of a team, building a team? Well, the importance of, of team building, um, I'm retired from General Motors, and one of the aspects that they taught us in upper management, uh, we had many classes, team building, team concept. There is an insurmountable amount of benefit that one gets from team building. You get away from the I concept. And from a biblical standpoint, we know what a person with a lot of I concept can do. When you learn to depend on others after depending on God, it magnifies your work. It lessens how much each individual has to do and it increases your dependency on others. In other words, you enable others to help you to accomplish what the goal is, whether it be uh, missionary in, in the field, whether it's biblical uh, teaching, whether it's the uh, health message, or hopefully it's the tying in of both the health and the biblical aspect. So team building is important. Uh, it saves our doctor many, 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 many hours of time as example. We look upon him as our, as our pastor, even though we know that he's Dr. Lawrence. But the relationship that we've built up uh, with our clients, his people, the members uh, that we teach each week, we have a close-knit community, so much so that when a person is sick, as example, the wife and I, Dr. Julie, we go visit or we report right back to him because we know that he can't be there at all times, but he has to be involved. So team building is critical, doctor. Yeah, very, very good, and that's, that's the whole concept. And we decided to build a team of various health professionals and medic medical specialists and Bible workers, and we had a, a Bible working lay evangelism team, and then we had a nutrition team where Dr. Julie sort of headed that up. And we had a, a chaplain 
pastor, a late, late pastor, Pastor Roman, who was a chaplain in one of the hospitals, and he came and worked with us. And, uh, and he offered a lot of emotional counseling to people. You know, this process of evangelism, people leaving their, what they're accustomed to doing and move, coming into a new way of thinking puts a lot of emotional strain on, on the relationship with your family. Because family members don't want you to, they think you're going to some strange, weird, um, offshoot group, a cult. And so you need that, that emotional counseling for these people to, and, and prayer to let them know that, that, that this is, you know, that, that breaking that tie, you're not breaking a tie with your family, but as they ostracize you, you can still, God will take care of you. And God will lead you through this process of, 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 of change, you know. We had a food service team, and we had a music team, a praise team, and then we had a children's ministries team. Because one thing you have to realize, when you start meetings in your office and you want your patients to attend, if you don't have something for their kids to do, they, they, a lot of times they would say, well, I, I can't come because my kids, I can't have my kids running around the office while we are trying to to have, a, have some meetings or whatever. So we decided to have a, 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 a children's ministries team. There were three or four for my wife, Linda. She was very helpful in, do, in, in, in leading up that, that team also. And with activities, so the same program that we did for the adults, the Eight Laws of Health, we did for the kids too. And they had a separate room. I have a conference room. They went in there with activities. And the kids actually would bring the parents out because they didn't want to miss the next meetings. Because the kids were so excited about what the programs for the kids mm -hmm. that they would actually bring their parents out to make sure they didn't miss a single meeting. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's talk a little bit about the power of prayer. The power of prayer. And you know we had prayer teams. And each one of those teams I listed for you would pray individually. Would pray individually. And prayer is so important in, in, before and during evangelism that we decided to, to have these health, healing, and hope gift and seminar registration. So you'd register on here, and you'd put your prayer requests on here for each person who, who wanted to come to the seminar. So we know ahead of time what their various prayer needs were, requests were. And so every person who signed up long before the meeting started We'd pray on each name every single day. So the Lord will cement that decision and bring them out to the meetings. And we'd pray for the, their needs that they had too. And God just blessed tremendously. We thought we were going to have a small 15, 20 member you know, attending series. And when we started our meetings, we had, what, 75 the first night. And they kept coming in my, in my waiting room, 75 people seated, and they were sitting back in the reception area, in the halls, you know, so it was, Dr. Bavel was there, you, you, you know remember what it was like, you know, and uh, so people just came out, and uh, God bless. And Dr. Julie, tell us something about praying, praying with the importance of prayer as people started to come out to the meetings. Yeah, it, what was really cool was that people would come with all kind of issues, whether it was a health issue or a family issue or finance issue or whatever it was. Um, and it was an opportunity for us to gain the blessing in their lives by saying, look, you know, um, you, you just got to know them. And uh, I remember one uh, lady came and she had some health issues. So she came up to me afterwards and, you know, was telling me, and I said, well, let's, let's go outside into the hallway. So we went all the way in the hallway, and we started talking. I said, well, let's just first pray. And so I prayed with her, and then we discussed what was going on, and then I shared with her some simple things that she could do. And then we prayed again because, first of all, we want to invite God because if we can truly show them that God is the one that's going to help them overcome this, and to be able to give them the strength to be able to do what they need to do in order to correct the problem once they hear what they need to do. Then we need to pray again that they would have the courage to know that God will help them. 
So um, it was just like opening up to let them know that God is present, God is real, and he can make the difference if you're willing. So it's kind of like what we're studying this week, repentance and confession. You know, you're, you're, you, I know I've done this, and I know that I have this problem, but yet I don't know what to do. But then when you share with them what they need to do, they're willing to do those simple things. And it takes a lot of faith sometimes when you tell them just to drink water. Like, what's I going to do? But it's amazing. It's amazing because uh, if they drink in the right kind of water, that gets rid of inflammation. It yes. gets rid of pain. Amen. It gets rid of a lot of things. But just having that opportunity to connect with the people by using prayer was very powerful. And so as we started the meetings, we emphasized the importance of prayer. And all the teams, the, 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 the praise team would pray together outside in the hall before they came into the meetings. You know, the, the Bible working team would pray together. You know, I would pull, pull a few of my people together and pray with them. And the, the children's ministries team would pray together before the people got there so that it was an effort of, of prayer and focusing that, asking God to just take us and use us and however he wanted to, to be a blessing to, to the people who are coming on. And 75 people showing up in the standing room only. I mean, no one left, you know, and, uh, and they kept coming week after week after week. And we decided to make, do the, the, the New Start program as, as a main health emphasis but you know, you start off first with nutrition, right? And Dr. S Dr. Sterling Thompson came in from, from, at the time he was in San Antonio to, to help me out with the meetings. And he and, he and I prayed for long into the hours of the night and, he, and we were impressed. Why start off the meetings with nutrition? Let's start off first with trust in God. Let's flip it. Because without a focus on on God and trusting in Him, everything else is futile. And uh, you know, you tell people how to do things, how to live healthy, the things to eat, the water to drink, and all these different things, but th their, their lifestyle has been such that they have been addicted to, to like pop, to sugar, to wrong foods, wrong lifestyle, to cigarette smoking, to drinking, and that lifestyle is there, and they know what they should do, but they need to be introduced to the source of the power. So once you introduce them to the source of the power first, true trust in God, and you know, people say, well, you know, I don't want to scare people, my patients away by this heavy emphasis on, 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 on the Bible. But we found it to be the opposite. People who looked forward to that, and they came for that, and uh, oh, it's, it, was, it was tremendous. And every night we had the... the, the the praise team singing with the piano right in the, in the small piano in the, in, the, in the waiting room. And people's hearts were just drawn. You could just look into their eyes and see that, that yearning. And, uh, and then, of course, the kids enjoyed themselves. And we served a vegan meal every single night. We had a food service team, which was so important. And uh, we served them a vegan meal each, each night. And the people looked forward to it. And the food was so tasty. One of our local restaurants in, in season supplied the food for us, and we would put it together and, and serve it. And it was, it was just a tremendous, tremendous blessing. And uh, let's talk a little bit now about the importance of visitation. You know, visitation is so important during the meetings, because as people come out, they have obviously, they put on these prayer request cards, what their concerns were, what their needs were, and we, we, we prayed for them, prayed with them, but visitation was so important. And we have a powerful visitation team here in Elder Green and, and his wife, Loretta. They are, and it's nice to have a, a team that's husband and wife. So if you go into a home where it's, it's a female by herself, you don't have to worry because the Bible says avoid the very appearance of evil, right? So wife, husband and wife go together. And uh, it's, let's talk about that. Loretta, how, how did you and your husband enjoy visiting some of our patients and, and spending time with them and praying with them?
Good evening. Hmm. What me and my husband find that. Oh. Just put the ball closer. Mm -hmm. We find that going visit, <laughs> visiting people, you just don't know that a lot of times that people are in the hospital and their family members don't, you know, get a chance to come around and see them. But what we'll do, we'll find out who was in the hospital and we just surprise them. And you'd be surprised to find out what that does for people. Amen. You know, they look, they can't believe, and then they don't want you to go home. Mm -hmm. They want you to stay with them. But the reason why we go as a couple, because where we live, it is dangerous. So we have to be, you need to be with someone. Um, um, you can tell I'm a little nervous. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. For safety's sake, we yes. can close up here. Yes. And um, like I said, it's just unbelievable that, that so many people need that. And, know, and what was nice too, um, thank you so much Loretta, what was nice too is that the prayer request cards, so many people put down that they had a family member who was sick, who was dying of cancer, who was in need or who might be in the hospital. So we would get the Bible workers t together and Elder Allen and his wife would go sometimes unannounced to the family member who was sick in the hospital, find out what room they were in. And uh, that made such an impression on the people who were attending Amen. that you came to visit my family and you don't even know them and pray with them, you know? So it, it became, it was like a large support group. All, pe all the people who were coming, we supported each other, we visited, we prayed together, so that spirit was always there. And of course the Holy Spirit was, you can feel his presence every night. Amen. Amen. And, and visiting in the home creates friendship and nurturing. So people know that you, you really love them and want to spend time with them by, by praying with them. El Al, you want to speak to that? Yes. To anyone who's serious about setting up a ministry like this, the idea, the hope that we have through the Lord Jesus for you is that you might just take a few notes because we've done it now for a while and it works. It just takes uh, a lot of prayer, a little money, and a little bit of time. And as example, um, when it comes to visitation, we believe that you don't just teach, teach, teach. Anyone can do that. You want to use the Word of God and the power of the Holy Spirit and let the Holy Spirit help you to reach the person. But we don't just believe in waiting until they come on Thursday, like my wife said. We take notes. We believe in, in actually helping the people to understand that we care. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care about them. That's true. And, and what we do now is we don't just focus on the person. As my wife said, we, we make an effort. And sometimes we have to go to Dr. Lawrence or his staff and try to find out where is a person's child in the hospital, or grandfather or grandmother in the hospital. They have no idea that we're coming. And visitation to us is a compliment to teaching the Word of God. Because once people know that they can trust you to teach the Word of God, and that the Word is not changing, and that you're not tying the Word of God in with any philosophy, then they begin to trust you. Then that's when they start inviting you over to their home. Here is where the difference comes in, doctor, because once we're in the home, we can then begin to see like, uh, like Dr. Julie can see from her profession, we can see erroneous eating habits, as example. Or we can hear bad language from the children, as example. And so now that gives my wife and I an opportunity to just take notes and to learn how to mentor at a later time in areas that they may need. Thank you so much, Brother Al. Thank you so much. And let's talk a little bit now about the conclusion of the meetings. We ran the meetings for eight weeks, and in fact, Dr. Um, Bavel came in, I think, in week seven, and Dr. Fernandez came in week eight to, to, to give that medical focus to, to our meetings. And uh, then we, of course, nobody wanted the meetings to end. 
<laughs> okay? Because um, people, 65, 75 people were coming, was coming, were coming every week. And no one, so you can't just say, okay, okay, now the meetings are finished. We're gonna, we'll see you later. Because these people are part of, uh, they formed a relationship with you now. Amen. Okay? And they're, they are, they're your patients, or the friends of your patients, or family members. So they want to be embraced. They need to be nurtured. So we decided to transition to more intense um, lifestyle classes and Bible classes. So we had two sign-up sheets. We said, now this is the last day of, the, of our meetings, but we are going to continue with some more intense lifestyle classes and more intense Bible classes. And then we had a ter third sign-up sheet if you wanted to attend both. You, you know, lifestyle and, and you know, we, we, we'll... So we had so many people, we had 33 people sign up. They wanted to continue. And most of them wanted to actually have both Bible and lifestyle classes. And then some just wanted prayer at home, visitation at home, and so we, we, we put those on, a, on, a, on another list also. And we started to have the classes now instead of Tuesday on Thursday, Thursday nights, because that's the best night for, for most people. The importance of weekly classes and the importance of continuing weekly classes. And notice I didn't say we made an appeal. Amen. This, that's not the time for it. Mm -hmm. We didn't decide to make an appeal and ask anybody who wants to give their life to, to, to Christ. Because we went through all the, 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 the eight laws of health. We went through a lot of our doctrines and so on. And just as far as studying the Bible is concerned, but we, this, the time for appeal is not, not yet. Mm -hmm. Okay? In fact, with our style, we don't even make an appeal. Amen. Okay? Amen. And we'll tell you how that works, works out so well for us. And repetition deepens impression. Amen. We learned that in our class, that's one of Elder Al Green's favorite sayings, repetition deepens impression. As you repeat things, as far as your study of God's word, as far as your nutrition and health, it deepens an impression on the mind. Now, the RAS in the mind, the brain, we're going to give you a little medical science of evangelism here. In the back of the brain, there's a, there's a, a, a group of, of cells called the reticular, articula reticular art articulating system, RAS, in the back of the brain. And that filters everything that comes into your mind. Every day, you get bombarded by a lot of stimuli. A lot of things you see, people say things to you, you hear all these noises. So that RAS filters what, what's important and what it wants you to remember. You know, sometimes you might, you have a friend who got a new cell phone. It may be a red cell phone, right? And you would never seen a red cell phone before. And all of a sudden, after that person got that red cell phone, you start seeing red cell phones everywhere, you know? The, you, they were there all along, but the RAS didn't really register that. So now that your friend has one, it's important to you. So the RAS registers that as important. Same thing with, with, with God's word and with, with, with health evangelism. As you repeat things, make it important to the person, that RAS registers it and as important, and it makes changes in your life. Now... Small group study is so important. And as we, we, we ended our meetings and we start, went into more small group study, it, it offered time for questions, right, Dr. Julie? For feedback and for, and Dr. Julie does the nutrition part of our class to start off and just discuss a little bit of that with us as far as the importance of that feedback and that that, that you bring to the class and the, the little assignments that have your people do to come back the next week. And One of the things that we found that was very good with interacting with the people is give them challenge. Every week, we're going to do a challenge. Okay, this week, we're going to do a challenge. How much water can you drink? All right? But you have to make sure that you drink the right amount. <laughs> and then maybe the next week, Okay, I want you to increase your fruits and vegetables. Okay, and then the next week, and, 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 and they're still continuing to do those things, and then we add, and then we add on. Like even when we did the um, exercise thing, 
that was like for a whole month, wasn't it? Yes. And then just to see how what everybody did, if they got tone or whatever. And one, one gentleman, he was just like, man, I don't have as much pain in my back anymore. I can't believe how flexible I'm getting just by doing some certain exercises because I was showing them c certain exercises that they can do. Anybody can do them. Just making it available at different levels. So that way, if they're just starting, what they can do as well as if they're already doing it, what they can do to increase that so that we have better stamina. Yes. So basically the big thing was to give them a challenge. Yes. And then when you came back the next week, you went around and asked, so how did you do? Uh, or yeah, yeah, you know, they would be excited when they come back. They couldn't wait to tell you what happened. Or maybe even if they lost some weight or, you know, I don't have too much jingle under there no more or something, you know. So we were seeing things that were taking place. Yes. And they enjoyed that. And, and every week you give them something to bring back, some homework, as, as it were, right. for the next week. You know, make this a challenge for the week. So it gives them encouragement to come back and to, to be diligent about what they do. And that, that really worked well for us. And sometimes we'd even call them during the week to see how they were doing. That we, we made sure we, we connected. In fact, I, everybody has my cell number, so we, we just text back and forth a lot of times. We were busy, and they would answer back and keep encouraging them all through the week. Keep that connection going. Now, the process of attracting new members to a class, that's number eight. The process of attracting new members to a class. Because you want to also, of course, there are some people who have dropped out or are not coming anymore. Of the 75 who came, there might be 33 who are still coming off and on. Most of them are still coming. And you want to keep more people coming. So to feed into the, into the, the Bible study group that you're having every week. And so we had monthly health seminars. Dr. Julie decided to, to come to my office and she would use the conference room with a small group, probably 10, 12 people, right? And she'd have monthly, and then if it got larger, we'll go into the waiting room. Well, monthly, she, we, we did forks over knife, knives. And uh, I know um, that worked out so well for us, you know, to focus on, on health. We, did, we talked about the Adventist health study, you know, and we didn't say, we said there's a group of people who live in the Loma Linda area, and we talked about the, their lifestyle and how, how they became healthy, and uh, we had cooking classes. In fact, Dr. Julie would go into the homes, okay, and actually talk a little bit about that, yeah. and, 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 and the grocery shopping field trips, I like to call it. Yes, <laughs> what I did was a, a program, it was a, a month-long program, and um, I'm, I'm the type of person that says, how to? How do you do this? You know, how can you put it in action? I, I'm always thinking, how can you make it practical? How can you do this? And in my mind, it's like, you know, you, if you just tell somebody something, that's just information. So everybody gets so much information overload. So what I did was I designed this book, and in this book was a, was a four-week health seminar to help people change their lifestyle. Even you had invited one of your uh, patients that, that, that you noticed that, oh, you know, he has a heart problem or something, and said, well, you need to go to this. Right. Well, that was a real huge test. In fact, he brought his wife, too. Yes, he brought his wife. He, brought, he, he did not miss. He yes. did not miss. The thing about this is every week we go through information. They fill out the little things in there as we go through the information. Then I give them a grocery list so they can go to the grocery store and then I put in there what they're going to eat for the next week. We start on Monday, now Tuesday, you got your grocery list and what you're going to eat for the whole week. And then you come back, we discuss what happened, how you're feeling, what's taking place, your changes, all those things, and then we go on to week two. Everything was there. And then um, when he came in, he was just like, wow, are you teaching this to the kids that go to school? I mean, they need to know this stuff. People just don't even, and it's this simple? And then the interesting part was when he came back to get his teeth cleaned, he brought this book with him. And in, in the waiting room, he says, do you know who this is? She changed my life. I mean, <laughs> yes. she changed my life. And then when they cleaned his teeth, they were like, wow, they couldn't believe what the change because they didn't see what they saw before. And she said, you know, you're looking good. You're shining, you know, you're just looking really good. And you're a little buff, you know. What have you been doing? I went to these meetings. 
And I'm telling you, she, she changed my life. And so she's like, what? And then when I came in like a day or two later, she come up to me, the hygienist, and she goes, um, do, do, do you have any books? Like, can I get all of them? <laughs> so it's like, the, these are things we know. But how do we give it to the people so that way they can say, oh, I can do this. So everything in here is, I can do this. I can do this. And showing them how they can do it. Because if you don't show them how to do it, they can't do it. And then um, some of the people that were coming to our meetings, um, I would go into their home and, uh, and we fixed up some food. Like um, there was a couple that had little children. And yes. I'm thinking, what can I do that would be fun? So that way the whole family can make some. So we made these little pizzas, you know, and got some ve uh, vegetarian meat and stuff. And, and the little boy was just like, hmm. He's like eating this thing thinking it's a real pepperoni. And it's not. And he's like, hmm, this is good. And, and then when they created everything, they were just like, wow, we can have the whole family together spending quality time making something good. Because that's what we're missing in America. We're so busy doing, doing, doing. But are we really doing the right thing in the sense of meeting where people are? Yes. And our families are being destroyed because we're not coming together. Yes. And that was one of the great blessings to be able to go into the home, to be able to share with them, and then getting to the, um, oh yeah, one week, um, I took them to the grocery store. And just going to the grocery store that was close by the office, yeah. I had to familiarize myself. So I went there on a Sunday because my class was on Monday. I went up and down the aisle, and that was around the time that they were doing this Daniel diet thing, all these churches in the area doing this Daniel 10-day diet, whatever. And I was going around, I was going up and down, making notes, and um, these two ladies were looking at the milk, you know, and I said, oh, do you like the almond milk or the soy milk? And they looked at me and they said, are you sent from God? And I said, what do you mean? Oh, we're trying to do this Daniel thing, and um, I'm not really for sure how to do it. And I'm like, oh, no problem. Let me show you around the store, and I can show you exactly what you need to get. Mm -hmm. And so when, we, when, I took this, when I took the students from our group to the store, a, a number of them would say, did you notice that she walked up and down and there was nothing? And then we went down one aisle, and there was like one or two things, and that was it. And I said, that's right. When you go to the grocery store, it's like looking for a treasure because you're, you're looking for the good stuff, but you're not gonna find it in every single aisle. And you definitely don't wanna look, especially child level, because that's the worst level, because it's all about marketing. When you bring your children to the store, they're gonna tell you what they want because that's what they're seeing in the buggy. So you have to understand the marketing concept when it comes to food. It's all about getting people to the point where they're addicted to the food that's not good for us. And that's why we that are trained have to share that with them and take them step by step. If you've got to hold their hand and take them, that's what you got to do. And then, like we said, visit, call them, text them, see how they're doing. If we don't do that follow-up, it's not going to happen. So we have to be so in tune with God. We have to put God first in our lives and they can see it happen in our lives so that way they're like, we can hang on to your hand and know that you're going to help us. Amen. That's and right. And that's what it's all about. So, win, so, so winning. So yeah. winning. And you know what was nice too is that a lot of people who came to the classes would, uh, obviously their patients, so they would come, come into the, the operatory and when, as I was working on them for their follow-up visits, they would be so excited about the class that the patients in the other operatory rooms next to what, over here, what was going on. And we had several new, new members to our class come because they overheard the excitement of another patient talking about how God has been blessing them, how they're losing weight, or how they were so excited about this new lifestyle and new change, and they would be jealous. Why do you, how, doctor, how come, you, how come you didn't invite me? You know, you know? And so we had, oh, quite a few people come from those particular types of, of eavesdropping, I would call it, you know? And, and we eventually invited them, and they, and they came, and, and some of them are part of our class today because of that, okay? And we also did great controversy giveaways you know, at the front desk, okay? This little short great controversy book, you can get it all the, you know, we got these from Remnant Publications. They, they come in, and they, they sell you like a, a box of 100 I mean, very, very inexpensive. And uh, 
we put on here complements of health, healing, and hope class meeting every Thursday at 6.45 p.m. and put a phone number there. So people would pick these up and start reading, and they say, oh, I want to learn more about this, and they would call the office number, and there might be patients or people who are dropping them off, friends and family, and this was a big feeder for our, 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 our meetings, Amen. a big feeder for our, our class, and that really, really helped. Now, the process of transitioning number nine to worship and church attendance, okay? Yes. Present the truth of God's word only. Yes. Praise God. Praise God. Okay? Praise the power of the Holy Spirit will convict the heart. That's right. We never invited anyone to come to our church. Amen. We Amen. never invited anyone to keep the Sabbath. Amen. We, don't, we don't do that. Amen. Okay? We just present God's word, present God's truth. And they always ask us, where do you guys go to church? We like, you like, you know, because you guys seem like a close-knit bunch who, where, where do you go? And, and what day you go to church? And uh, Brother Al, I know you want to speak to that for, 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 for a couple of minutes there. Thank you, Doctor. I get ex extremely excited about that concept because it's one that, that actually my wife and I stumble on. Before we were blessed enough to uh, join the ministry at Dr. Lawrence, my wife and I taught in our own home for about a year and a half. And in the teaching at home, in a year and a half, we began to uh, notice that we would teach to a certain point, a certain level, and then some people would back off. And I had to pray and go into fasting, serious prayer, and ask God, what's wrong? What's wrong with the way I, I teach? Because I've been trained at General Motors uh, as a consultant to the organization. So I did a lot of class teaching, etc. And I went to Arise, class number one. And so I, you know, knew the Bible quite a bit, praise God. But yet, for some reason, I was losing some of the people. And through the Holy Spirit, I simply found that, doctor, that when we place anything above Jesus, Satan will make sure that the stumbling blocks are thrown in front of you. Mm -hmm. And so I continue to pray because I didn't really understand what to do. This is why we were still at our home, not with him yet. And, and the Holy Spirit just simply revealed that the stumbling blocks are going to keep people out of the kingdom. Good people who want to be in the kingdom you're going to keep them out because you are placing things in front of the Word of God. And so I have to learn to not talk about Shabbat, the Sabbath, early on. I just didn't do it. I taught strictly the Word of God and the Word of God only, and depending on the Word of God only, to do the convicting of the heart. Secondly, I never talked about any other person other than Jesus Christ. And what would happen is that after a year and a half, and then we had joined his team, and we totally ignored anything dealing with church. We never talked for those uh, professionals who want to possibly start this in their own office. Please take this advice. Do not go into religious organizations. Just don't. Jesus Christ will make sure you don't have to. Teach Jesus only. It doesn't matter what church they go to or what church they don't go to. What we found out, doctor, is that after a while, people will watch you. And they started asking us, my wife and I, would you mind if we, what church do you go to? And it began to really, really amaze me. And I'm saying, you know, God, is this what we need to do? And we did. Amen. We simply taught the word of God. We didn't teach anything about church or anything. We let the Word of God and the Holy Spirit prick their hearts. Amen. Thank you, Brother Al. Al. And we found out that some of these people asked us where we went to church. We told them where it was, gave them the address. They just started coming on their own. Yep. You know? And so we had several people. We had at one point 10 or 12 people coming to church of, of the group who were studying. And... Five of those people just got baptized in the last eight months. Amen. Okay? And they're all patients, and they're, 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 they're one family. Okay? And they're reaching out to their family members now because they want their family members to be part of this whole thing. Okay? 
And right now we have, we have four or five people who are ready for baptism, uh, five more who are ready for baptism. And they are attending our church every week. Yeah. And we never once invited them to church. We never once told them about the Sabbath. But they learned about it as we studied God's word through the Ten Commandments and everything else. And they know where we worship. And they have started coming. And they, they, they are f more faithful than some of our regular members Amen. in coming to church. And so our, past, our pastor is having a, a series. In fact, the whole area, District 12, and the Michigan Conference is having an evangelistic series starting September, end of September. And they plan on being baptized then. You know? And so we, we, we transition them to, as uh, they come to church, obviously you get the church involved, get them to know the pastor, and then by that time, they, their minds are already made up. Amen. In fact, they are out witnessing, trying to get other people to keep the Sabbath. <laughs> you know? <laughs> That's right, like Derek, Derek. You know, he comes to church to class upset that he's, that he's talked to somebody in the, at, at, on the job and they, they refuse to accept the Sabbath. And he says, and he's not even baptized yet, not even Adventist yet, you know. And so it's infectious. It's infectious. <laughs> and you know something? Throughout these meetings and so on, we get the bigger blessing. As we, as we reach out. And the Holy Spirit sensitizes our hearts and our minds to the leading of, the, of, the, of, of God. So we become sensitive to what people's needs are. We become more perceptive and, uh, by, by, as we work with people in, in health evangelism. I want to talk a little bit about this biophotonic scanner. This little machine here has revolutionized my practice, it has revolutionized our ministry, it has revolutionized health evangelism. It's called the biophotonic scanner, and it's one used by Dr. Oz in his, in his, um, on, on television. That's where I first saw it. And then God sent one of the local reps to my office, he and his wife, um, to demonstrate the machine to me. He didn't even know me. I didn't know him. He just came and we, we, we have the machine now in our office. This is it right here. And what it does, the biophotonic scanner, it scans the, the, the hand. You, uh, you take the machine and you put your hand right over here, this fatty part of your hand right here. Hold it for, as the machine is turned on, connected to the computer, hold it on there for 90 seconds and it reads the skin, the level of the antioxidants in your body. Okay, and that gives you, and, and it, of course it, it gives you a, it gives, you an, it gives an indication as far as, you have different colors. If you're up in this range in the 45 to 50,000 reading range that you are, your antioxidants are pretty high, you're eating well, you don't, it gets, gives you a true picture of your health. And of course, Dr. Oz reads 75,000. He's the highest that has ever been recorded by this machine, you know, because he, 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 he lives what he, what he preaches, and he, and he eats, and he, and he exercises, and so, so I'm sure all, all the healthy people in here would have high scores, high reading scores, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it's, 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 it's more accurate than any blood test you can have or, or whatever. And, uh, uh, pardon me? Well, actually, you, you can't buy the machine, you know. You, you, could, you, could, you can lease it from them, you know, but you can't buy the machine. And I, I don't lease the machine so that I can make any money. That's not, that's what I'm, that's not, that's what I'm, not what I'm into. Okay, because they have products that they sell also with, that help to, to, to beef up your, your immune system and your anti antioxidant level. But we, um, we just use the mach machine for, we test all our patients because we found out that your antioxidant level is a direct indication of the inflammation in your body. Amen. The lower your antioxidant level, more inflammation in your body. 
the higher your, your antioxidant level, the less inflammation. People with gum disease have high, have, have, have a, a low antioxidant level. In fact, people with gum disease usually read probably around 10,000 or less. Okay, there's some people who are below zero. It doesn't even read on the machine. And, and you know, they are full of, of, of inflammation in their body. And we know that inflammation, for some of the physicians around here, leads to what? Systemic disease. Okay, cancer, um, diabetes, all these different things. So it, it, people tend to want to get their score. And it's interesting. Let me show you here. This, they have these little cards. This is the, you actually put this into your computer and turn the computer on. They send a computer with it. And you scan the card, and this is the person's personal card. And they can put this on their, on their keychain and then keep the, the big one. You tell, you, you tell them their score, and it tells you what your score is. And so you can be tested six to eight weeks after. And you, of course, you do the right things. Dr. Julie shows them how to eat healthy, the right things to do, eat a lot of. Now, we, we found out that berries, strawberries, blueberries, those, all the berries are high in antioxidants. You start using those, and your score will go up. Amen. You know, you start exercising vigorously, your score will go up. Okay, and we find that also drinking a lot of water. People who smoke, they have much lower scores. People who drink a lot of alcohol, much lower scores. So it, it acts as a means for us to draw people to our class also, because they said, what can I do to make, become healthier? My score is so low. So they sign up for, we said, well, we have classes just for that. And they sign up for the classes. And then obviously, once you come to our class, we will introduce you to the source of the power. Amen. Okay? We will introduce you to the source of the power to give you the strength that you need. Yes, we do, we do the biophotonic scanning. Um, obviously, they can, they can refuse it, you know, but we offer it when they, when they come for the initial, uh, as, as new patients coming in, they come to go to the hygiene department first and they, for, their, for their, their, their cleanings, their root cleanings and scalings. They, 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 they're tested with this, okay? And that will give them an indication. And when their score ends up being low, and we check them and see from the x-rays and they're probing that they have gum disease, we say, this is the reason why, you, this is the indicator that your score is low because you have inflammation in your body. And because of the gum disease, it's creating that, that drainage of, the, of all the fluids into your body and your, into your glands, and your, your body's full of inflammation. And as they get healthier, their gums get better. And as we treat them, it's just a total healing process. Somebody else had a question. Yes, Dr. Caesar. Okay. Um, people, we charge $20 for the test, you know, because it's, I mean, it's, it's insignificant, you know, so there are some other offices around the country who charge a little bit more, you know, and I understand that there's, there's, there's probably a code coming out that where you can, you can bill for it also, and uh, this machine is going through a, a transition right now, they're coming out with a new one which is almost half the size. And it's, it's, it's on an iPad now, okay? And it also checks for the, the genome for, for gaining weight. So it'll tell you if you have that. It, when you, it'll test also for your antioxidant level and for that gene for, 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 for weight, for, for, for tendency to, get, to gain weight. So if you have that gene in you, you know that, and the machine will test for that. It's brand new technology is coming out for the, that machine. Yes, Dr. Caesar? Yeah, I was wondering what they're basically using it like it used to. I mean, apart from the fact that people have, you know, all rights and freedom, yeah. uh, do they have some rational basis? Very few people refuse it, you know? Uh, you have, might have some people, you know, there are always people who are skeptical. There are always some people who are skeptical. And if someone doesn't have the $20, we do it anyway, okay? Because it's not about making money, it's about just providing a service. Because you know, ultimately, God will always bless. God will always bless. He always does. Yes. Oh, yes. Just all kids. In fact, a couple came in. The mother 
boast about how she, healthy she was. You know, she exercised, she ate well, and she was so healthy, you know. And she started coming to the meetings, and we tried to get her to eat certain things, and she, you know, apparently wasn't, wasn't as very diligent as she should be, but she said she was. So we tested her, her score was pretty low. Her score was pretty low, and she was obviously very upset, you know. But the machine doesn't lie. The machine does not lie, you know. It tells the truth, and it's tested. Because I test myself, you have to test yourself before you do the machine, and my score, I know what my score is, and it, it, it's always accurate, you know. And her daughter started coming to the meetings also. Her daughter was, uh, I think, eight or nine years old. We tested her daughter. Her daughter was the exact same score as the mom. I think one, one, one digit different. So it means the mother was feeding her the same types of food, and she had the same lifestyle as the mother, even though she was a, a younger kid. You know? And so it was interesting that parents and kids, usually with their mother's food, usually have the same score. Right? Yes. No, I haven't. Uh, by risk management, you know, care is indicated by risk I've heard of I've heard of, I've heard of camera. I just haven't. Is that good? It sounds like it's good. I had a rep who called on me several months ago and wanted to have me come in and have a lunch and learn with my office. And I was a little busy at the time and a little bit skeptical too. <laughs> so I um, he told me you'll call me back in in in, in a month. Or two months, so I haven't heard back from him. But he, uh, you, you know, it, do, 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 does it work for you? Or oh, you're just starting? You know, our team. Yes. Yes. This. Yes. This is powerful. Mm-hmm. No, you can't go on the website and buy it. Because see, they, they don't want to get it in the hands of the wrong people. If everybody could go on the website and buy it, you know, they, they, they would have people making false claims. Because the company that makes this Pharmanex, okay, or, or, or New Skin, they are in U Utah. And they, you, could, you could go and tour their labs. They, are, they have over 200 scientists working for them. And, they, it's, and, a lot, and many physicians, and they, they, their research is so is so um, precise and exact. And so, and they allow all the dentists or physicians who buy the machine to come and tour their facility at whatever time they want to, unannounced if you want to, and see how they, see how they test the machines, how they run the tests, and, and the technology behind it all. And it's a, it's a tremendous, tremendous machine. And any other questions? Oh yes, yeah. We have handouts. We give them. That, that, I would say, a hundred percent have improvements. Yes. Once you follow that diet plan, or if you, some of them are was so low they decided to buy some of the supplements, and they just call the company and get some supplements, and their scores immediately um, go, go go up. You know, in fact. 10, 15,000 points in, in, in eight weeks. Some pe I've had one person went up 20 points in, 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 in eight weeks. Yeah, yeah, right, right. I mean, I, I've gone up almost 15 or 20,000 from when I, I mean, I was, I was fairly high at first, 
but I've gone up 15, 20,000 just by being more diligent about what I do. And exercise, I know <laughs> you guys are exercise gurus, I know that, you know? And it's such an important part of, 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 of testing because you, once you get in that exercise regime and eat the right things, your, your score is going to shoot right up. Your score is going to shoot right up. Yeah, nutrition definitely is the more important, but that coupled with exercise is, is, so, is so vital. It's so vital. Yeah. Yes, Grace. Have there been any surprises? I mean, people that you know may be healthy, and then machines like the flesh become different? Yep. Or people that you know that Well, healthy. see, you can only go by what a person says they do. Yeah. Unless you live with the person, you know, because you know, people like to tell you that they're healthy and they do certain things, but they really don't. So the machine, machine breaks it down, lets you know this is where you are. I've had nobody who's been extremely obese who has had a high score. No, not extremely obese. Slightly obese, you know, a little overweight, they can have a good score. But in fact, I've had people who have had cancer, who are in, in cancer treatment, who have had cancer, who decided to get very healthy and, and, and change their lifestyle and change their diet and are on supplements for, for their, their, their cancer treatment as far as, you know, nutritional supplements, and they eat a lot of fruit, and then their score is pretty high, even though they have, they have cancer, okay? I've had a young lady who works, she owns a raw restaurant, okay? So she eats raw, that's how she eats, you know? And she smokes, she's a chain smoker, she said she couldn't give up the habit of chain smoking, even though she eats so healthy. Okay, and we tested her about six weeks ago. For the first time, she, she, she had the test done. Her score was very good. Her score, her score was, was excellent. Her score was, was probably the second highest of all the people we tested that day. Okay? Be yeah, because she was eating so healthy. Now, I, I told her, if you give up that smoking, your score will be off the charts. And she knows it. So she, she actually supplies some food for my, for my um, meetings, some, 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 some raw food for my meetings. And she is, she is working on right now with, with some of the support we are giving her at giving up smoking. You know? And once she... Once she go, and her smoking is due to a lot of stress in her life. She has like two, two restaurants she runs, and it's, it's tough, you know? It's tough, so it didn't start there, you're right, you know? She's had some experiences in the past, so she, is, she, she gets that last hurdle and climbs over that hurdle. She will, she will and then obviously, um, um, she's a Christian too, so I'm trying to introduce her to the source of the power. Because I said you can't do that last hurdle on your own. You know, you, you have Jesus Christ in your life, you, you commit yourself to him, he will take you over that last hurdle. Because you, you, you have a ministry in your restaurants that you need people to be around for other people. Yes? Um, how has your uh, home church been in regards to your ministry and the members, uh, the new members, you know, the babies? Have, have, have they been receptive? Also have you been supportive of ministry as your pastor? <laughs> that, that, that's a loaded question. <laughs> That's a loaded, loaded question. And yeah, it's, it's a loaded question. And e even though we are on audio verse tape, I will say that um, <laughs> our, our, our home churches are sometimes not the most receptive. Okay? We have a lot of wolves in our churches who try to attack who try to attack weak, weak members coming in and pray coming in. And so we have to sort of, we still keep them under our umbrella. We're not going to let them loose in the church. Okay, they come to my Sabbath school class that I teach. Okay, 
and we keep them under that umbrella, you know, we make sure we sit next to them in the same area where they, you know, we always do that, okay? Yeah, we, so we, we, have, we, we put a sort of protective covering over them, okay? And we pray for them constantly, okay? That God will give them a prayer covering, you know? Yes, Brother Al. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Remember, the way we, we approach it is that we try to take the Word of God and the Word of God only. So that means we're leaving out doctrine and stuff of that nature. And so when the new babes come in, and remember a lot of them, you know, ask us, can they come? So now we've got to do all we can to protect them like Jesus would. And so we're protecting them from doctrine because a lot of doctrine is, is adding on information that they don't need to know. And so we're very protected. That's a real good question. Yes. And a lot of people in our church, you know, um, are probably cultural Adventists. And they, they are not truly, they don't have the loving spirit that we, we should have. Of, of course, a lot, a lot of people do. And so you want to, to protect them from that, that, those onslaughts of the, of the enemy. Because yeah. uh, the enemy works within, within our ranks also. We know that. But God has been blessing and it's just, our time is almost up, but you know, it's just a wonderful experience. And we just, we are starting in the fall um, a, a new program. What's it called now? It's called the, the, the um, well, it, it used to be called the Daniel Challenge. What's, what's it, you know the, do you know the new acronym for it, Dr. Caesar? Okay, okay. <laughs> but it used to be called the Daniel Challenge, and it's called, it's called the, the, the New Life Challenge. New, new, new Life Challenge, okay? And you can Google that, and it's a new program that they're using in a lot of universities around now, started by a young, younger set of Adventist health professionals. And, and they are, it's, it's, it's just winning souls left and right. People are really embracing it at some of our secular universities and so on. So we're going to start that. And what we are planning to do is to reach out to our neighboring health professionals, non adventists in the area. I already have three, no, four dentists who have signed up themselves and their staff to come to those meetings. Yeah. You know, because they, it's, and they, they, two of them are Jewish. And they, they, they just want to have that health challenge because they, they're all into fitness and health and and of course, they're not vegetarian or, or vegan or whatever, but we're going we're gonna to bring them on slowly, you know, and see how the Lord works to, so we can share our faith with them. Yes. Go ahead. Yes, Dr. Caesar had his hand up first. <laughs> I think probably I would have liked to have a, a fitness team on my, on my staff, like, like what you guys do, because we didn't have that component. Dr. Julie did some later on, but initially, because there's some people that you attract to the meetings who are, who are want to get fit, and not necessarily, they don't want to do it the eating way unnecessarily or whatever, but they, you can bring them on that way. And so if we had a, fit, a, a nice fitness team to be part of our, our meetings, you know, and, I mean, the invitation is there for, for us so, so you guys can come up and, and work with us. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, no. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah. All right, now. No, no, you go. You yeah. Yes. And uh, they, they actually come and join the church. And at the same time, you acknowledge that there is uh, some stuff you've got to be careful of in terms of, of, of what is not. I'm wondering what do you teach uh, and what, what are you careful of not teaching? Well, we don't shy away from the Sabbath. We just present the Ten Commandments. 
as they are in, in their totality. And, uh, you know, we, we talk about the fact that the Lord, Lord says, if you love me, keep my commandments. And if we don't keep our command, if we say keep, we keep his commands, we don't, we are a liar. And we, you know, so, and we, we show them in the Bible where it says all liars will end up, you know what I'm saying? So no one wants to be a liar. So that means you have to keep the commandments. So Elder, I'll speak to that for, for, for a minute or two here. Yeah, real quick. We teach everything that you know. Everything. But the trick is timing, sir. If you start out teaching the Sabbath, you've lost them. Okay? It's simple as that. Everything you know and everything you believe in, we teach it. But we teach it according to a timing schedule. Okay? Simple as that. No, um, we, no we, we, we started off first with this simple book here, you know, Bible Questions Answered. It has a lot of information in here. And so we started off first with that, and then, then Elder Al worked together with, with Dr. Julian and myself as we, we formed. But he, he does mostly of the, most of the Bible study for us in that portion of it, and we, yes, go ahead. You mean the, the team members? Yes, they, they're from our local church. You know, you could, there's so many resourceful people in your local church, you know, who are, and you, you know the ones who are dedicated, you know, love, find someone who first who loves the Lord and who is not going to isolate people or ostracize them, who is going to love them, who's going to be a person who loves people. And they may have a degree in something, but they may not be the, the type of person to bring in to, to your office that, that, you know, and so we, we Pick those kind of people, and God just blessed too. God, God, God put a team together, actually, you know. And I think our time is up, and so we 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 have to to we. <laughs> so you have what? So we can stay around and, and and talk a little bit more and answer some more questions. But be, be, before before we before we go, I just like to for us to um, to close in prayer. So. Elder Al, could you close in prayer for us, please? God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Thank you, Father, for all that you have done for us. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for this presentation, Father. Something that we didn't do, Lord, but you prepared it long time ago, Father, through your Holy Spirit, Father. We ask now that every person in this room, every professional, every doctor, every nurse, every professional that want to use a program to bring people to the Lord Jesus, please, Father, through your Holy Spirit, bless them. Father, help them to become a better witness in the kingdom that others can know what we know, that others can go out and teach the same thing, Father. Your word is easy to understand, Father. It is not hidden. And so, Father, we ask now that your, your glory, your grace, and all this sh uh, should shine upon us, Lord God. We ask that your blood, the blood of Jesus Christ, cover us. Thank you for all that you've done so far, Lord God. Cover us with your safety, with your grace, with your mercy for the rest of this uh, meeting, Father. And we just thank you for all things great and small. Is our prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much.